Hello, hello, most esteemed viewers. My name is Jekyll Sangre, and a very lovely person on my 1111 Memories uh, re Retold, I think is a, I always forget the name, uh, video pointed out that I hadn't done one of these in a while, and they were right. Um, so, today we are. Uh, today I'm going to do a talks video that I've been meaning to do for a while. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, the, the villains in um, The Legend of Korra. Um, it's actually kind of funny that I haven't done one of these in a while, considering that they um, generally get more views than my Let's Play videos. you know. But then again, since when have I ever um, failed to follow up on something... That was working out for me viewership wise. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. So, Korra villains. Um, oh, only a minute of leeway. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> um, so, the way I see it, there are generally speaking three different types of um of villains oh by the way obviously spoilers for we're gonna sorry groundwork first um so we got uh we're gonna be spoiling first obviously avatar last airbender and the first three seasons of Korra. we're gonna be talking about unalak zahir and um uh aman um not in that order we're gonna talk about aman first um also I'm actually going to be defending um, uh, most of Zaheer's actions, um, so if you don't want to hear that, um, you don't have to watch. You just click on the video. I don't care. Um, or well, not that I don't care, but I don't. I don't want to stop you. And yeah. Um, and also, um, uh, let's see. Um, Uh, anyway, uh, I think that's everything. Uh, okay, so now core villains. Um, so the way I see it, there are generally three different um, types of villains um, in media. And obviously, this isn't supposed to be some like broad like all or like all villains fit into this category. Um, uh, but this just is supposed to be something. Um, to talk about something interesting um so uh, category one is you know a very simple i know i'm evil and i don't care type of villain so the most disney villains fall into this category um you know most incarnations of the joker um i'm trying to think what else who else uh farlord o ozai um would fall into this category as well category two is um a villain who you whose actions you can't really condone, but you can sympathize with. Um, so Edward Nigma from Gotham um, would be one. Uh, Azula would be one. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, like Mister Freeze, another Batman villain. I'm trying to think of non. What would anyway? Um, yeah, sympathetic villains whose actions you can't condone or um, are. Um, are one of the um, categories. The third category is um, characters who are design like villains who are designed to be uh, maybe not you know thought of positively by the um, by the general. Um, um, who are maybe not thought to be right, but who are supposed to sh show flaws in the hero's um, reasoning and worldview. So Killmonger from Black Panther is one of the most well-known recent examples of this. Um, um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, uh, uh, well, obviously he's a here. Um, um, the, the, the third type of villain, I think, is more... Um, uncommon because there's they're more nuanced kind of kind of by definition, um, 
I think most villains end up in the second category. And I also think one thing interesting about this categorization is it doesn't it doesn't judge it doesn't characterize based on scale of actions or badness. You know, so one of the only Disney villains I would classify as type two is Frollo from Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Um, even though he is awful and does reprehensible things, he still counts as type two because you're actually on some level supposed to uh, sympathize with him, um, or you're supposed to sympathize with his him enduring hellfire, basically. He's supposed to be believable and understandable, but also evil, 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 evil. Um, and the same with Azula. Azula's actions cannot be condoned at all, but she, there's a reason why she does what she does. Um, and Azula is more sympathetic than Frollo, for sure. Frollo is just... The reason I say it is because, uh, something I've said in the past, every teenage boy in a... Um, and I'm not trying to exclude women, because I was not a teenage woman in a, um, in a conservative religion, um, um, has that feeling of, I'm going to burn for this, for this, and I don't understand why I feel this way. Um, not the possessive aspects of it. So, like, half of Hellfire is extremely relatable. Anyway, um, I also want to point out that none of the, none of these categories are intrinsically better. In fact, I deliberately chose villains who I think do a, um, do, uh, who I think are good, are well done villains in every category. Um, I mean, Fire Lord Ozai is like just straight up like, I'm powerful and power, like my makes right, and yada yada yada. Um, and but yeah, I think he was a great villain. Um, so, um, and according to, and also I'm going to be referencing, um, Hello Future Me's video on Zaheer, um, which if you're watching this, you've probably already seen. Um, um, but uh, if you haven't, uh, check it out. Um, um, and and, ta- and according to him, the creators of Legend of Korra um, wanted to wanted to make villains that would that would challenge. They wanted to make type three villains as opposed to type one and two villains. Um, here's the thing, they kind of didn't, at least not at first, because, um, Amon is, is, is he, Amon feel, Amon, and especially, well, we'll get to Unalak, but Amon feels like a, Amon feels like a declawed version of a type three villain. You know, there are so many critiques of bending you can make. There are so many. You could be like the. You, um, I mean, heck, you know. Okay, so, you know, obviously it's foolish to try and make a one to one ratio of um, of groups of people in fantasy stories versus um, the real world. However, I do think there's a pretty strong parallel. Um, I, I mean. Well, um, if, unless there is one, because I think there is a parallel between, like, anti-non-bending, anti-non-bending and ableism. Um, because what is a disability? It's something that society expects you, is built around that and expects you to have that you don't have, you know? And especially in Korra's world, society is really heavily built around bending. So if you just had, like, one scene of a bunch of non-benders living in poverty and squalor because... They were, um, because they have a much harder time finding a job in this market, um, because they can't, you know, use a light lightning bending on the, um, um, to, to make the power plants work or whatever. Um, then people, uh, then you would be able to understand. Instead, it's just all like, oh, firebender killed my family. And, um, and, and like, and that's why all bending is bad. And it's like, no one thinks that in the real world. Like, and of course, um, Amon is revealed later to actually be a bender, which I actually, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, um, Amon is revealed to be a bender, um, which is, I guess, thematically appropriate, but also pretty weird. Um... Uh, I mean, not not even thematic. I don't know. It's weird. Um, 
And so you can make that point, but that still doesn't explain why there were apparently a ton of people who were ready for an equalist like revolution. Um, so yeah, the um, uh, um, okay, so a couple of other just some random thoughts about Iman. I don't really have much to say about him. Um, again, D. Claude, um, D. Claude, um, villain because he's clearly supposed to. This is the problem: is they don't act, they don't move him into a and hand. The, I'm talking by Amon, and for let's just say when I say Amon, I also mean all the other equalists. Um, um, unless unless I'm talking about Amon's like backstory, um, because like. Because there's clearly, like, there's plenty of things, reasons. Again, I can think of plenty of reasons why um, um, the equalists would exist. Um, but they don't, but they're, they're all based on individual. Like, did all of these people's families get killed by firebenders? Um, and and were the firebenders not brought to justice? And, and if that's true, then why didn't you show us, you know? Um, okay, so that's the negative out of the way. I one thing about Amon I really did like um, was was actually retroactively kind of fixed or at least addressed a problem I had with one of the few problems I had. The ending of Avatar is great. Don't don't at me. Um, but one of the problems I had with it was the being able to take away someone's bending is an ethical dilemma that the show doesn't treat as an ethical dilemma. Like the uh, like the ability for Aang to just be able to take away Ozai's bending at will that's scary on both a practical level of individual power um, which we will also get to and also on a like you just is overriding someone's bodily autonomy like better than just killing them um, yeah so and the answer to that could be yes um, the answer to that could be yes but the show doesn't even address. The problem, the show mocks Ozai, which is a bit weird considering um, what happens with, um, what happens to the people who are not Aang, who get their bending taken away by, that, that's the problem, even when, even when Korra introduces it, they still show Aang taking away someone's bending and it is fundamentally, it is framed as fundamentally different, um, it is framed as a fundam like as as good even so that's a problem but it still at least makes you think about the idea and it ties it in with blood bending which is appropriate considering they both involve loss of bodily autonomy um yeah so let's see um because uh, we see how it messes people up like the the, the asshole um, other team member, the uh, pro-bending guy, I can't remember his name. Like, he is, you're, you feel sad for him when he gets his bending taken away. Like, it is legitimately messed up. Um, um, also, just for the record, you know, plenty of people, um, plenty of people say that um, Amon is a communist. Um, and those people are wrong. Um because this it's rooted in I think this false perception in um, America of um, communism as a um, uh, it, it's it's rooted in this in this um, uh, um, I, I oh, sorry it's rooted I feel like there's this misconception of communism as being about complete, like everyone's supposed to be equal in all things and um kind of i mean well that first of all that's not like leninism that's that's like anarcho-communism um but even but and it's also not like everyone needs to be 100 percent equal in all their ability it's like people should generally have the same opportunities and should control the means of creating things and not just have ever a couple of people at the top controlling everything um Amon literally works with a factory owner? Like, that's the only other named equalist character? So, if Amon's a communist, he's a terrible com communist. Um, 
Anyway, just putting that out there. Um, no, and, I, and I'm not going to try and defend Amon's actions. You know, I don't think what Amon did is fair or good. Um, and But the problem, and that's an okay thing to have for a Type 3 villain, but you also at least have to acknowledge, you, you have to at least understand where they're coming from. And I don't understand where Amon is coming from, you know. Um, obviously, considering the recent events, the the also the the people putting on masks and and it being sk- ooh, spooky, it rings a bit differently now than I'm imagining it did in 2012. I think was when season one started. Um, yeah, so um, okay, so um. Uh, one other positive thing I'll know, I really did like the the not like the the idea of um, you know if that was outdated, the idea of non benders getting just like all lump, pro non bending protesters getting all lumped as equalists and and uses it and like getting detained indefinitely by the state is um, it is a bit prescient, um, unfortunately. Um, I think that should be everything, um, at least off the top of my head. Uh, I might come back to Amon if I remember something. Um, also, the, uh, you know I mentioned you didn't mention Kavir. That's because I haven't actually, as I'm recording this, I have not seen Legend uh, Season 4. I'm planning to watch it, and then I'll do a, um, a part 2 on... Um, on uh, um, uh, uh, on probably responding to a lot of the criticisms of this video and a lot of um, a lot of um, uh, um, uh, sorry uh, criticisms of this video and oh yeah and also talking about Kuvira um, so yeah um. So now we're going to, um, maybe I should make this three-part. No, I'm not going to record the three today. Anyway, um, I'll just make this all in video. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so Unalak. Um, and also I'm going to talk about season two of Korra. I really wanted to like season two, and I really did at the beginning. And I love playing devil's advocate with media. I love, like... I don't know. I, I always, you know, just, okay, let me just give you an idea. I really liked Mass Effect Andromeda. I really liked Mass Effect 3, um, including the ending. Um, I did play the extended cut only, though. I didn't play it when it, I played it, like, I first played it, like, five years after it came out. So, um, um, there's th- th- that bit of context. Um, I, what was the other... I'm sorry. <laughs> um, a Mass Effect uh, remaster, yay! Um, the uh, I I really like you know Skyward Sword is actually my favorite Zelda game. Um, I think the prequel, the Star Wars prequels, are better than people give them credit for. I'm still not very good and with legitimate problems. Um, uh, yeah, so. Okay, so uh, so I love I love playing devil's advocate. And I generally see more much more of the positives in media than I do the negatives. I still had a hard time finishing season two, and it did. Uh, you know, basically, I really wanted to disagree with, with um, uh, Hello Future Me on um, on Cora uh, on on season two and on beginnings because I think be, I do think I agree with him that beginnings was well done at, in its own little bubble, um, but I think it should have been framed less as fact, you know. And I and I don't like the idea one of completing light and dark with good and evil, um, um, and with like making um, you know the dark avatar. It 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 cheapens the spirits and yeah does all the things he said in his videos. I'm. And Unalak is a is weird. Unalak is you know in a lot of ways season two of of Korra is the black sheep of the bunch. Um, uh, again, maybe maybe season four will also be maybe it'll be like a uh, reverse Star Trek Odyssey. I don't know. I in my opinion, I haven't seen it. Um, so season 
Anyway, um, season two, uh, season two of Korra is, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so that's not season two. Unalak. Unalak is really, really weird. (laughs) Really, like, um, like, he starts off as, um, you know, as, like, not even a villain, like, um... A character who certainly is can be kind of a jerk, but is certainly not evil. Uh, and then he finds out, oh, he is evil, and he was hiding this plan. And it's like, yeah, okay, you know, he he wants to unite the North and South, and he might have some points. Wait, what are they? And then it just like goes completely off the rails, where he's like, at the end, he's like, I will become a dark avatar, and and rule the world for reasons, you know? Well, he doesn't even want to do it for his own personal power. It's framed as, like, an ideological thing. But what kind of ideological thing? Like, it, it's weird. It's really, really weird. Um, honestly, I don't really have much else to say about Unalak. Again, um, um, weird and and doesn't make a lot of sense like there's no there's no it just seems like he just gets less and less um sympathetic as and more and more just like huh as time goes on um yeah so um one other thing real quick i just there's so much about season the problem is there's so much about season two i really like i like bolin's general everything um I love his his mover career. Um, I love his. Um, oh man, he's he's he is he's awesome. Um, and I love the the loving parody of like film serials. You know, like um, the the, the fiction, fictional over the top version of Unalak um, has like the Flash Gold Flash Gordon pauldrons. Um, I don't know. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, anyway. Um, so, that brings us to Zaheer. Um, almost exactly the length of a core episode in. Um, and this is probably going to be most of the runtime. Um, full disclosure, I do, I am an anarcho socialist. So, I was kind of inclined to agree with Zaheer on a lot anyway. Um, not on everything, and we'll get to that. Um, but there's, um, and I actually spent a lot, probably way more time than I should have in the comment section of Hello Future Me's video on Zaheer. Um, and there were some, obviously, there were some very good um, and legitimate criticisms of Zaheer in it. Um, among those comments, um, uh, the most obvious one being Power Vacuum Release of the Rise of Kavir, which um, I'll get to, I'll probably touch on in this video, but definitely address in the second video. Um, but, um, um, so the, and, um, second, um, second of all, the, um, the, it's okay, so, um, so, but first there are some really weird and bad faith criticisms at the same time, um, uh, one person called Zaheer a sociopath or no a psychopath there was the 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 they like had a quote where it was like everyone who disagrees with me is wrong and that's like how soci or psych- psychopathy works and i'm like first of all that is not how psychopathy works psychopathy is like a mental condition that causes you to this uh, lack of empathy i don't know i don't i'm not a but it's not how like no one uses psychopathy in that way um and someone called him a sociopath and I'm like I don't think that's true either like he um like the the here's the thing there's a big difference between everyone who disagrees with me is the problem and this 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 institution that that um that most people think is good or at least necessary is actually bad you know um so, um, like, so, okay, so, 
One one thing gonna get out of the way. So Zaheer sometimes just is weird. He still has a bit of Unalak and Amon in him, um, but he's much better. To, I mean, even even taking, I'm gonna try and take out m- my personal preference and feelings about at least from judging uh, Zaheer from a narrative standpoint. Um, um, but he's like much more like the fact that like, like okay, think about it this way. You know, you know that if you've seen season three of Korra, and if you haven't, why are you watching this? Um, I am totally the guy who ignores spoiler spoiler warning. So um, yeah, um, so you know that. So there's that scene where um, where um, Zahir and Korra sit down, and Zahir like explains himself to Korra um, right after doing the most reprehensible thing he does in the show. Like, he, that is, okay, I just have to get this out of the chest. That's, like, the one thing about it that I just, one thing about him that I'm just like, why would the writers do that? Why, why, why does he, because, just so we're on the same page, and for those of you who don't know, he, there's, a, it's a, the classic villain move of, oh, you failed me, and not, and it's like, he pushes him into a spirit prison, a prison in the spirit world. Anarchists don't believe in prisons, at least not in, as, like, in the, in the way they're currently run. Um, so, what? <laughs> and so here, Ott clearly does not believe in prisons either, considering that he lets all of them out. Like, um, which, there's plenty of, like, um, I'm still kind of exploring, um, anarchist ideas and whatnot. Um, check out Thought Slime if you want a guy who has, if you want to see a guy who is, has much more knowledge about this type of thing and, and, you know, I'm probably going to make some bad arguments. Um, I am still, I am young and I am worrying. Um, and again, as always, when we talk about these things, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and, and, and or criticisms. Um, so, so, um, okay, so there's a lot to unpack with here. Um, Obviously, yeah, there's that stupid scene where he does something that seems really out of character. Um, oh, sorry, before... I, I'm, I'm just... There's so much I, I want to talk about, and I don't know where to start. One thing I will say, one other thing I'll say, is that um, the, the weirdest... By far the weirdest argument again... Again, there's, like, some arguments that at least I feel like are definitely being made in good faith and, and are like legitimately engaging with these ideas, which is good. You know, most of the arguments against here, I don't agree with. And I think there's explanations for, or there are explanations for, you know, there's anarchists would have pl- like, there's ways you can explain why Kuvir rose to power. Um, and I will get into that. Um, um, but, um, I'll get it. I'll probably talk about that in the second video. Um, but they're at least being made in good faith. Um, but some of them are just like, huh? Like, I don't understand what you're... Like, there was one, there was the, there was one person who said basically, like, he wants to kill the... Like, killing the Avatar would be wrong because the Avatar is a natural part of the world. Like, it would be unnatural or something. It, it felt like a divine right monarchy argument. Obvi- I mean, and I was like, Wait, what? Like, like, okay. So even if you ignore season two of Korra as canon, there's a line in the um, there's a line in the uh in in the um uh there there's a line in the Lion Turtle, the freaking Lion Turtle, and at the end of uh, Last Airbender says like you like. I, uh, in the era before the Avatar, he mentions an era before the Avatar, and it's like, so, why, like, like, so not only can the world exist without the Avatar, the Avatar does exist. Um, yeah, um, there's also arguments about, like, well, he, um, he's trying to force this on the people, and it's like, like, he's defying the will of the people, and it's like, no, he's dismantling an institution, and like, and the fact that you're mistaking an institution's will for the will of the people under the institution is part of the problem. Like, anyway, um, you really think that 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 people 
want it like that the earth that him killing the earth queen which again we're gonna talk about a lot um is very um is uh like you think that was defying the she wasn't elected and even still there's still tons of of legitimate criticisms about elections they're better than monarchies and dictatorships obviously um it's funny because the the wins the quote that's attributed to winston churchill um i don't know if he actually said it because quotes um um the like democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others is like yeah that's um that's why um uh i'm like that's um sorry um that i don't think he meant it the way i i interpret it now um anyway so um uh, let's let's see what else is there oh yeah one thing is um the one thing i want to talk about is um and and i've been talking about this with so many of my my like friends and family um um and it's the um it is the aspect it is um oh, sorry one thing i've been talking about with my with my friends and family uh is his i think the the excursion onto air temple island um that he that zahir makes is really interesting um i because you know um so for those of you who don't know he tries to join a group of the one of the the inciting incident in the plot of season three is that there are new airbenders um and if you don't know why that's significant um why are you <laughs> again that that is kind of weird um um the the first show was called the last airbender and there was a couple more in, in cora um but um now there's a bunch of them and they're just kind of like popping up and zahir gets becomes an airbender he was a non-bender before and so um that's like how how he gets out of prison um and uh, the um so a bunch of the old airbenders are shining the new airbend some of the new airbenders um and uh, uh so Zahir, uh, anyway, sorry. Um, a bunch of the the old air, um, and Zahir goes on, and he like he like meets a lot of the Airbender kids, and he actually like forms a bond with, or at least like gets along well with everyone else. And he's like, and one, and, and then when and when Kaya tells Tenzin that Zahir was there, he's understandably like. Uh, like concerned because you know Zahir is is a criminal um and he was he I don't know if Tenzin knew what Zahir's motivations were but Zahir it's understandable to be worried about your family around someone like that I don't no one there was in ever in any danger even even when Ki, when Kia or Kaya when she finds out about um about Z finds out about Zahir, he just like he doesn't he doesn't fight. He doesn't try and hurt her. He he defends himself and then leaves when the opportunity presents itself. Um so so and that's one of the things I like about their portrayal of Zahir is he is definitely a like utilitarian who who thinks that sometimes that ends just by good means, but that's not a, that doesn't mean he just does whatever in the bay hope of someday, you know, like he's not like killing a bunch of people because maybe it'll make him be an anarchist or whatever. He's like, okay, we're, I don't actually believe in, in prisons, um, but I am going to imprison Cora's friends so I can get access to the earth queen. Um, and then once the earth queen is, taken care of he then he's like then i'm going to release them because i have principles and even though i'm willing to violate those principles temporarily i'm not willing to stick with violating them again we can debate about that like the ethics of that or whether that's good until the cows come home i personally do think that it's at least i don't know um 
Uh, but it's at least it's consistent, um, and he's one of the only fictional anarchists to actually like be like is like as an anarchist ideology rather than the Joker. Is like screw all the rules, you know. Um, so yes, yeah, so let me. I'm trying to think. Um, okay, I, I'm just gonna. I'm just, okay. We got to talk about the Earth Queen. We got to talk about that. Um, again, I'll get into the the. Ramification the political ramifications for killing the Earth Queen, um, th- in you know later. Right now, I well one I think you know um, I had a lot of fights with um, fe- female friends and and family um, about Zahir and 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 I think they do genuinely disagree with me and they also um, and they also. Um, um, you know, and, and I've noticed that they seem to be way more defensive of the Earth Queen than any, um, than any man in the, um, and than any man who, you know, I, you know, talk about, like, Donald Trump, like, some, like, um, um, uh, Donald, like, doing what it was here to, to Donald Trump, they were like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, you know, I'm, you know, um, but the, um, but my, um, but, and honestly, I, I, I kind of, I, I don't like understand it on an emotional level, but I can't understand why, why there's a difference there. Um, and I think that, um, I, I actually, was pretty dismissive at first, you know. I thought I thought of it as just bad optics, um, and I've changed my mind. You know, some people have, have changed my mind on that. I, I do think there's there's more to it than than just bad optics, um, but I will say that I don't think there's there's gendered motivations behind what Zahir does, um, like. No, and just to be clear, I'm not saying because he did it for ostensibly for an ideology that makes it not gendered, but um, like you can definitely be a misogynist and an anarchist, um, especially especially for an ANCAP, um, and, but and not just an and just not not just a libertarian or an anarcho capitalist, um, American libertarian. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, everyone is going to hate me for this one. <laughs> Oh man, but I I do want to hear your criticisms. I I do want to, and I, um, if they're in good faith and if they bring up something interesting, I'll probably even respond because you know, I have the time and no one's watching these. Um, so, um, if I don't respond, just it's it might not it's yeah. And you did make a good faith and solid argument, or whatever. That's not um, it, I, I'm sorry. Um, and you uh. uh I don't know. I don't know why I didn't respond. Um, um, anyway, <laughs> that's just uh, digging myself deeper. Um, so I, I, again, I do think that you can definitely like if if someone in like the world of the Song of Ice and Fire um, was like was like ostensibly an anarchist who wanted to um, who wanted to. Um, who who wanted to um to um uh, um um sorry uh who who wanted to rid of all the kingdoms of kings and queens but like really hated Cersei like really hated Cersei and everyone else was just yeah but really hit, was fixated on on Cersei um. Um, the only, also, um, the only, um, queen of the Seven Kingdoms, um, anyway, um, then I would be like, mm, your problem might be with Cersei, and while Zaheer certainly does target, um, the Earth Queen, he doesn't, he, uh, he doesn't seem to have any, um, uh, like, well, well, he, he doesn't seem to hold her in any less contempt than, um, than any other, 
um, people in positions of power. You know, like Cora even says as much to her dad. You know, she seems she clearly she seems to think that that he he doesn't like her dad either. Um, and uh, um, uh, oh, sorry. So, um, and also. Um, the way he treats his female comrades are, is, I think, really good. He treats them like any other member, members of the crew. I actually thought, found his romance with the, the tall lady, um, who could combustion bend. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Um, all the other, um, all the other members of the Red Lotus are, are pretty, um, cool, but also, um, um, uh, forgettable, um, um, they don't get a lot of development in screen time. Um, anyway, so, Zahir's, um, uh, so, I, okay, so, uh, so there's, when you take into account the fact that he doesn't ever use gendered language when he's, um, when during any of the scenes with the Earth Queen or with Korra, um, the fact that he treats he treats his female comrades as well comrades and equals, um, which I know is a really low bar, but it you know doesn't strike me as someone who's particularly misogynistic. Um, at the same time, um, and the fact that he um, uh, and the fact that he, that he does like there is evidence that he does hold other leaders in contempt. Um, the it doesn't seem like it just seems like it's the monarch um who is like the worst um members of an of an anarchist group and the avatar who is someone who has done a lot of harm um <clears throat> daily <clears throat> uh, not taking care of sozin you know the avatar is not perfect the avatar is um you know, and people have said that, like, oh, but, but Rava is, um, well, first of all, Rava, like, they didn't know about Rava, and, and, um, uh, okay, people argued that the Avatar can't be evil because they have the spirit of Rava. That's, that's, I, I probably should make sure that's clear. Um, well, one, Rava doesn't exist in, like, as a, it's, it's not a good response to anarchism as a real life thing, because, um, I mean, again, using fictional media to justify ideology is dubious, but it's a good way of talking about these types of things um, as well. Um, Rava is um, uh, most avatars aren't aware of Rava. Um, Rava also can't control the avatar's actions, and avatars have done harm in the name of good. Um, in the past. Again, Kyoshi created the freaking Dai Li. Not as to be a police state, but that's where they ended up, you know. Um, and that's a way more interesting critique of power to me than just it's it's evil. It's that sometimes you might, your actions might, if you have, if your actions affect tons of people, they might affect tons of people and have repercussions that are dire and that you never intended. Um, and I don't think, I don't think Zaheer hates Korra. I don't think Zaheer hates... Zaheer hates the idea of an avatar, but does not hate Korra. Honestly, I kind of agree with him, and I do think that Korra is particularly dangerous as an avatar. You know, like, she is way too impulsive and, and hot-headed. Um, like, um... Like, imagine if Zuko was the avatar. Like, um... That would like pre like pre must regain my honor Zuko or no, there's gotta be a better like Jet or someone was the Avatar like you wouldn't want them with the power of the Avatar state of their hands so it's not because when he when he does the when he kills the Earth Queen Zaheer's like. You can hear the contempt in his voice because the Earth Queen's terrible. The Earth Queen's awful. She, she like kidnaps children and makes them fight her wars, or is it known as a draft? Um, it's it's more complicated than that, but it still is like kind of weird how the 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 draft is very 
the the draft is different than the no the draft is it's funny how like yeah and it's and it's, um conscription but you know not when the united states does it uh anyway um the so the um so sorry um so like you can hear the like contempt on his voice when he's talking to the other queen because she's terrible but he also his his tone is very different when he's talking to Korra. he he's actually like it, and it's again it's it, it's a this is why he because he's not He's not trying to kill Korra. He's trying to kill the Avatar. He's trying to get her into the Avatar state. Because if she's not in the Avatar state, then it's pointless. There have been there were plenty of times when he could have killed her, you know, much easier than when he put the, than when the, there was the Venom. But that would have just started the cycle again, and that's not what Zahir wants. Um, Zahir doesn't want a different Avatar. Zahir wants no Avatar. Um, so. Yeah, um, and again, um, so going back to the Earth Queen's death, I, I've explained my reasons for why I don't think it's gendered, but also I'm a, I'm a man, so I'm, and I would actually, I would be interested, if you think it is, um, let me know in the comments, and I will consider it, um, yeah, so, um, is that everything about Zaheer? Um, I've heard um, several arguments about why. Um, uh, oh, one thing I do like about Zaheer, actually, and this is something I talked about with um, with a friend of mine um, once, um, and that was Amon is interesting with Amon because Unlock's the odd person out. Amon is very stylized in the universe. He's created to be on propaganda. Uh, he's a persona. Um, Zaheer is just like a frumpy middle-aged guy who's um flies a glider <laughs> you know like um i mean he straight up says when he announces that the earth queen is it he's just like uh hey guys um the like the um the like the earth queen's the earth queen's dead um you don't need to know who i am or which of course, it was also probably an identity protection. Um, but he's, I think it's also, like, he, he says it doesn't matter who he is. He's not just like, ooh, I'm mysterious. He's like, nah, I'm just... Like, he believes that he, he knows that he's one of the other... He is one of other people, you know? Um, anyway, so the... So... Um... Uh, z um, all right, let me think. Um, z so, uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, let me think. Oh, one thing I do like is how they, fr it's interesting because most story in most stories, rioting and and releasing of prisoners is framed as like a universally bad thing, you know, and a dangerous thing. And I like how Legend of Korra portrays it as like mm, not really. I mean, like most of most of the people in American prisons are there because of you know drug offenses, basically. Not be and and they weren't selling drugs because they're inherently like. Their inherent drug dealers because that's the situation they were in um so yeah um so so they friend and so when they release the prisoners it's it's a like well that's probably a good thing you know not necessarily all of them but like again like in the text they are explicitly stated to not all these aren't like murderers um um and also the the looting is like the the people from the the outer wall going in and taking all the stuff from the inner wall that they had to give. Um, so, um, and that's that's the thing that you know again we can debate. Uh, I know from experience that we can debate Zahir um, and his actions until we're blue in the faith, the faith, the face. Um, 
But he's at least like responding to a legitimate problem. His response might not be right. I think it's at least as right as many. I don't know. Um, but um, but it doesn't feel like like non-benders are oppressed. Like when was this established? You know. Um, yeah. So. I think those are all my points. I think those are all the things I wanted to talk about, but I, I feel like there's something else. Um, let me think. Um, I talked about his, his excursion on the air. I do like how it's interesting because he it's interesting how he tricks Cora um, with the the he 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 does have he does have the air nomads captured and he is he says he's threatening them except. They're actually not in any danger. They're, like, way over there. And Cora's like, you tricked me! And, and it's like, well, yeah, but this way they're not in danger. Like, and that's a more risky. Like, that's more risky, but it also means less harm to those people. Again, like, he actually, he's an edge just by the means person, but who also is considering doing, he's trying to minimize the damage to the to other people's lives. You know, if he was, again, this is why he's not, this is why, uh, you, again, you could argue what he's doing is wrong, um, but this is why he's not a sociopath or a psychopath, because he does care about people, and he does take their situations into account. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Um, obviously, Guru Lahima is interesting. Um, the scene with oh um the scene where the scene where he kills the earth queen is obviously um really good and the the, the when her servant runs away and she's like literally hiding behind her throat and calling him a coward um that is not um that's kind of funny it's like okay boomer um the the uh and also again the servant didn't actually have anything to fear like zeer was not gonna kill it if this like worst case scenario the servant like is like no you have to go through me first and he just like blows him out of the way or something um because i don't this, i don't think any of the dai li agents were killed in that scene um and if they didn't kill dai li if he didn't zeer didn't kill dai li agents he definitely wouldn't have killed that random servant um um, one thing I will say is that a lot of Zaheer's motivations, you kind of have to dig down. That's one of the reasons why I think um, Hello Fuchimi's video got so successful. Partly and partly because it is really good, but I think it's also because there's definitely an explanation about why he wants to kill the Avatar. Um, but there isn't any. Um. Uh, but. There isn't any, um, um, they don't, it's never explicitly stated. And I kind of understand it. I mean, who would want, um, who would want, like, an hour of, of, um, of Zaheer and Korra just sitting and debating political theory and praxis? Um, okay, I totally would, but I think I'm in the minority here. Um, I mean, I've literally spent almost an hour at this point just rambling about about political philosophy and whatnot um so uh, um uh, yeah i'm trying to think what else um that scene again like taking go removing myself from the equation the scene where the scene where Zaheer kills the Earth Queen is just like amazing, like amazingly crafted and like the Korra actually does a lot of like bold stuff for a kids show. You know, it feels like it was made for the kids who grew up with like like the people who watched Avatar when it aired and who are now older. Um, and that might be one of the reasons why they went from. Um, yeah, big bad. To, and that's not to say that there wasn't a lot of complex stuff in Avatar. Um, obviously there was. Um, but the, uh, the overarching villain wasn't, um, 
that. Um, let me think. Um, um, you know what? That's that is probably enough for now. Um, as I just think about having a part two, or I could do an addendum or something. If there's something I forgot to mention, um, so. Uh, yeah, um, so keep an eye out on part two. Thank you for the, um, um, to the person who commented on the 11.11 video, um, for finally giving me the motivation to do this. I've been thinking about this for a while, and part of me was like, do I want to do it all in one? Do I want to talk about Kuvira? I haven't been watching it for a while. Anyway, and so now I'm just like, yeah, I did it. I, I did the video, um, finally. Um... So if you like the video, give it a like. Again, I would actually really like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, 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 I, um, let's see. So, sorry. Um, so, um. If you want to get notified when I do more of these, because I do them pretty infrequently, but I also do analytical let's plays where I talk about stuff like this. Um, be sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Um, think, 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 think. Jekyllstein, think. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Twitter and Letterbox and the link below. Uh, share this video with anyone you think would you think would like it, would want to see it. Um, and I'll see you in part two. Um, all right, esteemed viewers. Um, I have been Jekyll Stan Gray, and I'll see you in part two. Um, where I, I will talk about Quivira, and I'll respond to uh, the criticism of this video and talk about anything I forgot. Alrighty, bye bye.